Is this going to be a little emotional? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Um, well, it will be announced at this point. But yeah. if you guys missed it in a past episode, approachable. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Don't even start. I know. Approachable is coming to a close. Yeah. Approached is coming to an open. Yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean, the approachable spirit lives on. Alyssa and I are still together. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, we're never breaking up the team. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Someone DM me and said, you can't break up the commune. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we don't plan to. <laughs> yeah. Just because approachable is being put to rest doesn't mean our love for each other is. So true. Yeah. So for the last time. Do you want to ask me if I'm ready? Are you ready? No. I'm not ready. (laughs) No, no, no. I'm ready. I've been ready. All right. Let's do it. We're going to, uh, we're going to go through all of our past episodes. Yeah. And just reflect because that seems like the sentimental thing to do. Yeah. I'm surprised that you came up with that actually, knowing how sentimental I am. You know, I think it's like nice to like go back sometimes and, and also like I feel like to me, this podcast has, like, changed so much about, like, our friendship. And, like, I've learned so much about you. So I think it's just kind of cool to, like, go back and look at it. Yeah, for sure. <sighs> I'm not going to cry, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, like, eight months <laughs> pregnant trying to do this. <laughs> uh, so our very first episode ever was Are You an Imposter? Yeah. And that episode actually got us to number one on uh, the New and Noteworthy, the top charts. Yeah, which was crazy. We weren't, like, sure exactly how it was going to go, like, with starting the podcast and stuff. Um, But, like, the reception on that first episode was so great. Um, And we talked about imposter syndrome, which I think is, like, it's it's a topic that, like, more people should know about. It's a topic that I feel like once you learn about it, it really helps like put things into perspective. If you haven't listened to it or you don't know what that is, um, basically imposter syndrome is just um, thinking like you're not good enough or that you don't deserve what you have or that other people deserve it more than you or whatever kind of thing. And I think this is something that we all sort of experience. And I'm sure that we were experiencing it a little bit too at the time that we recorded Oh, that. for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've struggled with imposter syndrome in so many different avenues of my life being a bar manager at like 23 24 I mean like being in charge of an entire team going to like Mm -hmm. (laughs) meetings with all these people who understand spreadsheets and cost of sales and I'm like huh you know what I mean and then um coming into the podcast and stuff like that when we started the podcast the conversation around me was very different um it was a lot of people were feeling like I was your sidekick or um that I started my YouTube channel because I wanted to be like you and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I think like throughout the years, because it's been two years now, people kind of have like grown to know me a little bit more. And so they can like see me as this whole person instead of um, like a perception kind of thing. Yeah, like an add on of you. And like I started my YouTube like two years before I moved in with you. I just, (laughs) my videos were way worse (laughs) as is with anything that you start right like you kind of find your groove and stuff like that um but I felt imposter syndrome around that as well like being on the podcast and um feeling like I was an important part of it do you know what I mean which was something that was interesting to me like I just quickly listened back to a couple of our episodes just like snippets um it's so interesting because I do now feel so like secure yeah in like my worth online like whatever it may be you know what I mean like I don't think I'm like the shit you know what I mean but like (laughs) I'm happy with what I'm doing and I feel like I deserve to be what I'm doing like doing what I'm doing as well yeah well and uh, even just like I mean beyond the podcast you've worn a lot of hats over the past two years (laughs) you've like really explored well the past three years I guess like since you moved in kind of thing which like it's crazy it's even been that long um but and also it feels like it went by so fast I know um but you've explored so many new avenues and so many different directions and stuff like that so yeah I mean like remember when I was going on set Mm -hmm. at like 5 a.m it's so weird doing like 11 hour set days that feels like (laughs) again like it feels like so long ago but at the same time like just last week I know it's so odd I know you freaking have lived a lot of lives in the past 
three years. I know. I've been doing the same old fucking shit. Yeah, but I mean, not really, because you started a makeup brand. <laughs> yeah, but that was already like in the work. That was like <laughs> happening like behind the scenes, so it doesn't feel like a new thing for me. Oh Fair. boy! Episode two: puke lattes and other drunk stories. That honestly, like, still is one of my favorite episodes, just because like it was so fun. I love that story of you and the and the puke latte cup. It's so weird that you were drinking when we started the podcast. I know. Like I was saying, because Alyssa's been sober now for almost almost two years, almost two years, which is fucking crazy. I know. Um, but I was saying the other day, I'm like, it feels like you have always been sober, like mm-hmm. like because it's so not a part of like our lives. Because no. I also don't drink, especially now. Um, <laughs> but. Um, it's so weird to even think that you were at the time. Yeah, like when we started the podcast, I was probably like in not a great place. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I, it was at the point where I knew that I was having like a lot of like guilt and shame around drinking. And I wasn't drinking, um, I was very secretive yeah. with my drinking, as I've said, like online so many times. Um, so people wouldn't often see me other than my partner, wouldn't see me like really drunk or anything like that. But like I would be hungover. You know what I mean? And just like pretending that I'm fine and stuff like that. Which is so weird because like, I mean, obviously we live together. Yeah. But like in separate spaces, obviously. But um, but yeah, I I feel like I never saw you drink really. I never, I never thought it was like a thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was, it's been interesting now, like watching like your whole sober journey and just like coming to understand like how much it was like a part of your life versus... Mm -hmm now it's yeah well even watching like how much I've grown in myself since I took Mm -hmm. out that substance yeah it's just wild yeah it is crazy and it was I mean it was shortly after this that you started because I think there is um because you stopped drinking on in August July June 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 15th that happened over season one that's so crazy. You you started, you were drinking at the beginning of season one. You stopped drinking throughout. Mm-hmm. Man. Uh, episode three was Millennials, which this one, I I think I was kind of like, eh, I don't know how that one's going to like do. Like I was kind of like humming and hawing about. Even releasing it. <clears throat> yeah. And, um, and we actually recorded quite a few. I mean, over the course of the podcast, we've recorded quite a few episodes that never made it <laughs> to <Yeah>. air. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, kind of like, oh, like, are people going to be interested in this one? Is it going to be like a boring conversation? I don't know. But that episode did so well. I think it it was one of our most popular episodes. I think it still is. I think that one is number one. And number two is the addiction episode with Matt. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it did phenomenally well. Um, and we spoke about like the difference between millennials and um, like boomers and Gen X and stuff like that and um, wage discrepancy and inflation and um, how there's this like at the time it was um, the boomers like kind of hating <laughs> on and Gen X first for a little bit um, hating on millennials and now it's so interesting looking back because right now it's kind of like Gen Z <laughs> is like making fun of millennials yeah. I know I'm so offended anytime like that like because I'm not on TikTok but like anytime a TikTok makes it to my timeline on like Twitter or whatever where I'm like oh my god I, I can't believe we're like the butt of the dr- it never ends it's relentless from both fucking sides <laughs> <laughs> honestly <laughs> not good enough for the boomers like the gen z thinks we're like losers <laughs> <laughs> God. but you know what's funny about that to me and i do have quite a few like gen z that follow me on uh instagram and they're like we don't care like we don't care about you and i'm like shade <laughs> but um i think it's more so like i mean we are getting older do you know what i yeah. mean and so when like when i looked at like 30 year olds when I was like 15, I was like, you fucking, you're you old as yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I get it. Like, it's fine. Now, what is interesting to me is all of these fashion trends that like mm. were a thing when we were younger. Yeah. And I'm like, we did that. But then I remember my dad um, when 
it was the flared pants, which is funny that they're coming back around. Fashion is so cyclical. It is, man. My mom used to say that to me when I was growing up, and I was like, oh, that shit's never coming back in style. And here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, my dad was to saying that flared pants were popular when he was younger and told me fashion was cyclical. Yeah. And I'm like, and now here we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the skinny jeans are out. <laughs> yeah. And like the mom jeans coming into style and stuff, which like I thought like, yeah, I thought like like straight up skinny jeans were going to be, why would it ever go out of style? Yeah. They're perfect. Mm-hmm. I haven't let them go personally. I'm not about to fucking wear some flared ass pants. No. I either. feel like you have to be like 10 feet fucking tall for that shit, man. Here's the, my thing with like mom jeans is my <clears throat> legs and butt in comparison to my waist doesn't make sense <laughs> for yeah. mom jeans. I can't do it because either the waist is like gaping and mm. they're like suction cupped to my thighs yeah. or I can't get them over my, my butt or my thighs. And so it just I've tried like I've tried to be cool and hip in mom jeans even the jeans that you wore in in um on your honeymoon yeah like i i tried those exact pair on and i was like <clears throat> i was just gonna say I'm, mom jeans is like the perfect place for me because i have no butt whatsoever and that's like the whole point to me of a mom <laughs> jean i feel <laughs> is that it's just like loose and stupid in your butt <laughs> and like that's it works so great for me they look really cute with high heels yeah i love so it so true so true yeah that was a popular episode um, oh, I didn't think that we did this so early on. Oh, wow. We were, oops, I'm playing it. We were bold. Yeah, we were jumping into the controversial topics. I thought that that was way later on. Um, episode four was when does life begin? And that was one where we discussed, um, we talked about abortion and there were some laws changing at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, in the United States, yeah. Yeah, in the United States. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised that we took that one on so early we were friggin' bold man yeah <laughs> yeah i guess so um but that episode was it it, it was it was a little con- it was yeah <laughs> yeah i think that that it was, was it was a mixed bag the response yeah i think that was our first foray <laughs> into um receiving not hate mail but <laughs> there were some it towed the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I mean, I think that that was to be expected with mm. the topic at hand. And both you and I are very, like, um, set in our beliefs of pro-choice. And yeah. um, actually, I think it was only, like, six months ago I had somebody tag me in a video um, saying they couldn't believe that I was pro-choice, relating it back to this episode two years ago. Um, and usually it's just, like, I don't even want to, like, fight about it because I agree that you have your own right to your own choice right yeah, that's yeah. part of being pro-choice if you believe that you think that you should keep your child a hundred a thousand percent that's yeah. your right um so I don't even like but j- that one I was like let me put on my glasses um <laughs> you know what I mean because she was trying to discredit like um there were she was trying to discredit like actual science in that thing and I was like oh okay well you know, I'm not. We're going to need to have a discussion about Yeah, that. <laughs> because there are um, things I know in that episode we debated over when does consciousness begin. Mm. And so there's really no definitive way to like prove, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we can prove when uh, a fetus begins to feel pain, um, I believe is what we talked about in that episode um, based on, I think it was neurons. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember what it was exactly. Um, so there, there was some gray area in there, but I think if I recall, she was saying some things where I was like, oh, but that's not actually correct. And yeah, in the video, I think they were saying that the gestation was like a lot further along (laughs) than it was. And so I was like, but you're not even like painting an accurate picture in this propaganda. Yeah. Because you're, you're flat out lying. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But, um, it is crazy that we started that. I had to call a lawyer (laughs) to, to like research for it. Yeah. But I remember that like, we were moved to do like I think that we were nervous about it but we were like no yeah like we want to talk about this because it was like current and it was happening right then um but also I got a fucking I got like a thing in the mail the other day for um like it was like an anti-abortion flyer and it had like pictures of like aborted fetuses and stuff like that and I was like this is so cruel to send out like I get that you're trying to go for like the shock value to like prove a point kind of thing but it's like this is so cruel like who knows like who you're delivering this to yeah and what they are what they're going through and stuff like that it was so like 
like I've seen that shit before like when people are like out doing it on the streets and stuff um but to have it delivered to my house I was like oh I feel so violated like I'm I'm pregnant right now <laughs> like yeah. this was just and like like being pregnant and you know living because obviously like I'm, I'm pro-choice as well but it's like living with that constant fear like I think so many pregnant people experience that of being like so scared that something's gonna happen kind of thing and just seeing that imagery I was like man this is just like not the way like yeah I mean I think that that's the goal though to like um <clears throat> you know humanize obviously the mm-hmm. fetus that you could possibly be aborting but it to me it doesn't it doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of how much nuance goes into that decision. You know what I mean? And um, I just, I think that most people that choose to have an abortion, um, they make an informed decision and they know, you know what I mean? And, um, and there's, like I said, like so much nuance and the, the statistics on um, how far along people are when they get an abortion uh, because a lot of people are saying for late stage abortion and a lot of the photos and stuff like that are depicted in more later stages. Yeah. And uh, I can't remember the statistics now, but it was like overwhelmingly like early. Yeah. Instead of late. Like I think it was less than 1% or something like that was was late stage. Yeah. Like third trimester. Um, but yeah. Well, and in, in, in a lot of places it's not legal unless it's um like medically. Medically, yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean like even just beyond abortion, it's like, I, I don't think that most people go into any medical thing lightly, no. you know, like, so yeah, I don't know. But it was, it was, it was a controversial response, Yeah, <laughs> but I'm still, I'm glad we did that, did that episode. And I learned a lot actually from that episode too. Mm-hmm. I have one more thing to say. The, <laughs> the other thing that really um, irritates me with that um, pro-life movement, I guess, uh, is that they're, they're not offering any solutions for, yeah. um, parents after the fact so you want us to quote save these uh, quote babies um but you don't want to give any resources to help after the fact you know and again so much nuance um and I just don't think that you need to like explain to someone why yeah you know like I need to have a good enough reason um well and as with any other again as with any other medical thing it's on your business yeah you know, and I think I think we I think we actually touched on that on in that episode talking about, you know, like the issues around like adoption and like all the kind of like options that are put forth kind of thing. And, and how like if someone's going to be keeping the child and not, um, you know, putting it up for adoption or whatever, it's like there really are so few, if any, resources in most people's areas mm-hmm. to help care for that child, to provide any kind of, like, education around, like, parenthood, labor, anything. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, like, that's such an undertaking. And, I mean, now especially I feel even more strongly about it because it's, like, you know, the, the... the things that can go wrong during labor um, and pregnancy, the the changes in your body, like that's a that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Like there's just there's so much to it, and it, I really like I I feel more strongly than ever. Like if you're not ready for that, that's a big that's a big thing to expect someone to just do. Yeah, you know. And my feelings stay that like the longer it it goes on, the more emotional I get about the thought of it. Mm -hmm. So in a perfect world, you find out as soon as possible. And you know what I mean? Like for sure. And in that episode, I talk about that. I'm like, I struggle with like six months in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that does, you know, elicit a response in me for sure. Um, So I, but I think that you can have that as well. Be part of your, Mm -hmm. you know, ideals and, some, well, well and, and it can be not right for you. No, and like, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, but again, not my decision to decide that on somebody else's behalf, mm-hmm. you know? And and yeah, the reason that we were so, like, moved to do that was because women's rights were absolutely being, like, attacked. <laughs> yeah. In, in the United States. Oh, man. It's been, I mean, politically a wild ride over the past two years. No kidding. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, episode five was depression and anxiety. That was a, a viewer request. That was our first viewer request. Was it? Yeah. And her name was Samantha. Oh, well, there you go. And then you said, Samantha, I love her already. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> um, yeah, that was... Uh, I was almost, like, sad that we did that one so early on because, like, it's something that I can always come back to and talk about, which we... I mean, we've, we've brought up depression and anxiety in so many different other episodes and mm-hmm. in different contexts and stuff like that, but... Um, 
that's always been something that's just like important to I mean just I think mental health in general has been important for us to talk about yeah and I did listen to um a bit of that episode and it's so interesting listening back hearing about you asking me about anxiety Mm because I was really just at like the beginning of understanding mental health yeah back then and which is also crazy because now you seem so well like you are so well versed in mental health you know what I mean like and and yeah it's it's so interesting I mean I had just started going to therapy back then Mm -hmm. so wild and now like I mean I made so many big changes like quitting drinking and exercise and I said this in one of my recent videos not quitting exercise but. oh did I say quitting exercise <laughs> you said quitting drinking and exercise oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. and I decided to cut out all the toxic shit in my life drinking exercise to <laughs> fuck them both <laughs> no I started exercising um I said this in one of my recent videos uh because I think it can be like frustrating hearing people say like just eat well and exercise. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work for everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm so, I'm so lucky that like that genuinely, it changes my life. Like yeah. over the last week, I feel like I'm the only one talking in this episode. I'm so sorry. I don't um, know. But I, over the last week and a half, I got an IUD and um, at the time that we're filming this. <laughs> Has it only been a fucking week and a half? It might be two weeks now. Oh, God. <laughs> This fucking last few weeks is just going so goddamn slowly. <laughs> oh my god. Time's just inchworming oh, by. Truly. Um, but I haven't been able to exercise because it's mm. just really painful for me. And I cannot believe, like, I thought I didn't have anxiety anymore. <laughs> I was like, Anxiety? Oh. Never heard of her. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, that's just like a thing I used to struggle with. Um, it came back as if it had never left. Like, mm immediately when I would wake up I would have like the tightness in my chest unable to breathe feeling super awkward like not really knowing like not being able to like look like even you in the eye like I'd be like it was so weird and I'm like oh this is I know what this is now I'm I'm back in like anxiety yeah and then um I now I'm able to kind of like stagger my gym days and I'm noticing like okay my anxiety is going away it's just so crazy man when you find something that works for you Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, beautiful. Well, and also just like realizing that like the normal you thought you, I think we talked about that in the episode too, but like the normal you th- you thought that you had versus like what normal can actually feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, but even just hearing you explain anxiety, like I, I, anxiety, I kind of like would experience like here and there, but it was always really, really fleeting kind of thing. But during pregnancy, I've been experiencing anxiety more than ever and like, it is just like it's it's misery to me like that is like the absolute worst shit on the planet like I don't know how anybody copes uh yeah but you said in a recent video of yours you were like it's like the devil you know Mm -hmm. yeah because recently I had my first like real like I wasn't diagnosed with depression or anything like that but like through talking to Sam and like explaining my symptoms um I think that I had depression for like literally a, a week I yeah, think it was like, like a little bout. Yeah, like, yeah, not like I have depression. It was like, what would you even call that? Like situational. Yeah, um, from my birth control. And it was like, I was like, I don't know what, like I actually felt like I was going, um, I know, I don't like to use the word crazy because I know that it has a bad connotation, but that's truly what I was thinking in yeah. my head is like, I'm, I feel like I'm going crazy. Like I was concerned about like my actions and like stuff like that. Not like I wasn't like scared for my well-being, but like, It was just, I was crying and like hopeless and I was like, what is going on with me? Yeah. So I really think it is like the devil, you know, Mm -hmm. like me just going through that for like one week. I was like, how do you live? Yeah. (laughs) Honestly. Well, it's, it's so funny because like I, depression is my my main bitch. (laughs) Like it's like, I mean, it sucks still. It's like horrible, obviously, but like it's, it's so much more, I don't know. I think it's just, cause I think for me, it's like anxiety so overwhelmingly physical Mm -hmm. and I hate that like shit being in my mind I'm like yes I can like deal with that all day all night but like and not that like depression doesn't have physical symptoms too sometimes but um oh god like it's just that that feeling of anxiety is just the worst to me yeah I mean it is yeah having it come back I was like nope 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 don't want this (laughs) <laughs> I took my little CBD and I was like, nope, <laughs> not doing it. Go away, Satan. <laughs> oh, God. 
Um, episode six. Chicks. Ch- chicks. <laughs> Episode six. Episode six was uh, what choices made you who you are. That was one of my favorite episodes to record. Yeah, it was fun because I feel like we got to learn a lot about each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which again, like, it's so funny because we have known each other for so long, but like living together over the past three years, like I know you so much better now. And in a way, because like I would have said that like I know you pretty well mm-hmm. before then, but I actually feel like I know nothing about you. Like, like now looking back, I'm like, could I have even like listed like 10 things I know of I don't know that I could have like it's so it's so odd so that that was um that episode we I believe it was like a Dr. Phil thing actually he did it on his podcast um but we discussed the choices people and moments that led to um what made us who we are Mm -hmm. um and yeah it was I think it's just that that one was like so fun to me to record even though like parts of it were hard because like it's just such a good exercise to kind of like reflect back on your life two this is really sad but two of the um points because it was like a points like the things um I, I think it was like choices and then people pivotal people or something like that two of those people have since passed away Like, that's just wild to me that, like, when we started this, do you know what I mean? And, like, those are people that, like, regardless of how they impacted my life, like, Mm -hmm. they're no longer here. Yeah. That's just wild. I mean, honestly, like, freaking, again, I keep saying it. You've just, like, lived one fucking hell of a life. (laughs) It's, like, never ending. Yeah. Ugh. That was so rough. But it was just, it's such a weird thing. Like, when you were just saying that, I was like, what were mine? And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, two, wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness a tough episode but that's one I feel like I'll go back and listen to yeah I did actually listen to it I think a year ago yeah yeah just like a good again like a good reflecting point yeah um episode seven can you die in your dream (laughs) I really have nothing to say about this I don't either (laughs) like people actually really liked this episode but we were like are we even gonna release this? yeah that was one of the ones where we were like "Ah, okay but I think we were just like yeah fuck it like let's just whatever (laughs) yeah but just a fun one yeah um learning to love ourselves with birds papaya was episode eight and wow sarah from birds papaya has just fucking blown up like taken over instagram oh she's so lovely she's so lovely and she's so like just such a powerhouse man like honestly just works so fucking hard it was such a pleasure meeting her she's like so sweet and like Ex- probably one of those people that you would think that you would want to meet in person kind of thing and you're like oh would they be the same but like she's so sweet and so great in she person. is the same <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and like I think that a lot of people um you know because I'll, I'll read through her comments and I, I feel like a lot of people when they first follow Sarah um if you guys don't know who Sarah is I'm sure you do at this point because again she's a friggin rock star um she her her instagram is kind of all about like self-love and like her journey around that um and like body image and all that kind of stuff and for me when i first found her it was like a really cathartic experience Mm -hmm. because it was just so bizarre in a way to see someone just like presenting their body as it is Mm -hmm. naturally and um and it was like really healing as well and i think that a lot of people have that experience and talking to her in person i felt similarly yeah I remember after she left because she actually back when we were allowed to have people in our house I know she actually came to film the podcast in our house Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and after she left you and I were both just like so moved and like I took a picture of my belly do you know what I mean like I and I was really struggling at that point with my body image um and like how I was feeling and stuff like that and so that was like really wild for me to to take that picture and I think that that's actually the day that I decided to stop editing my body and photos yeah because you decided to do that like long before I did I was like nope I'm hanging on to that (laughs) it was it was um 2000 I think it was January 2019 when I stopped um which is also it feels like it's been so much longer than that but one of the things that um Sarah said in that episode was she was talking about how like she was always really self-conscious about um people like like feeling her stomach or seeing her stomach or whatever um and so she would never let her like ex-husband ever touch her there and then her well her ex-husband she wouldn't let um and then her she was like laying down in bed with her now husband um and he touched her stomach and she like went to go 
move, move his hand away or like react and then she was like no like I deserve this and then we all started sobbing yeah. in, in the episode and like I still like I think about that moment because it was such a like I had such a visceral visceral reaction to it because it was like man like I just know that so well and like it's so it's it's so sad in a way that like we all can kind of relate to experiences like that but at the same time it was like just hearing someone say that out loud and and also like going through the motions of just being like no I I am gonna be okay with this like I am yeah. gonna like let myself you know experience this is just like well yeah. she's so poetic too like mm-hmm. so, just such a writer at heart right like she started as um a blogger if I recall correctly and uh, just the stuff that she writes it's just so vulnerable and um like raw and real mm-hmm. and I don't think you have to be that way but it's just such like a pleasure and an honor to yeah. like be witness to it um from her so yeah no I'm she's she's just such a like a treat on social media honestly yeah, yeah. and you know. she um she has her own podcast now as well yeah and she got to number one top yeah. and uh new and noteworthy yeah yeah she's freaking just killing it man yeah she deserves it um, quitting our jobs and following our dreams with uh, Shaughnessy. So Shaughnessy, oh. um, I met through, she does microblading. Um, and now she does restorative tattoos as well for um, like cancer survivors and stuff like that. Um, but she's also fucking awesome. Like she's so great. And she was, she is, just has an interesting story like art wise. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, just going back to like you quitting your job I can never get over it because it's like you were so dedicated to the career that you had before you were living here and it was kind of like every time I would see you um like every few years or whatever like after high school while you were still working that job I was like I wonder if I wonder if like that's just like not that that wasn't like an incredible career because it was but I knew that you had like other things that you wanted to pursue outside of that um from you know a young age and stuff like that and I was like I wonder if that will be like the career or if she will at some point just be like fuck it like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do something else and like whatever and it's just been so interesting to watch you just like pick things up and try them and try something else and whatever like it's it's such a like pleasure <laughs> to <No>. witness <laughs> I was, um, because we're packing, because we're moving, I was going, this is, it takes me so long to pack because I go through every single like sentimental thing that I have. (laughs) I'm talking every notebook, every page, every card. And I found the card. Doodles even. (laughs) Like (laughs) I found the card that Sam wrote me when, um, I quit my job and she said so many beautiful, like nice things. I cried. Um, and then at the end and she said all of this today about fucking time, Uh, all of this to say about fucking time. (laughs) <laughs> like, it's so true she like she wanted me to quit my job for like so long and just like follow my dreams I'm a, I'm a big pusher I'm a big advocate for people <laughs> making an irresponsible choice uh, but the thing is is like I I am I mean look at me do you know what I mean like I'm so much healthier I've made so many good decisions it's not to say that like that career was like da- da- damaging or mm. anything like that it's just I wasn't taking time for myself yeah um and I was kind of um just like existing Instead of like, like, I didn't even know what my, like my core values were. I remember you asking me one time and I was like, and I was like, I don't know. (laughs) Do you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I hadn't like really spent time with myself. And, um, it's funny because people like actually often ask me like, how do you make money? And like, what do you do for work? And it's like, um, you know, you can, you can truly make money basically in any way that you want to, if the circumstances are there for you. And I was lucky enough to like, come into this house where you had so much knowledge about social media do you know what I mean and I you know took chances and um I'm not fucking rolling in the dough you know what I mean but like I pay my rent (laughs) I pay my bills and um you know it's the sky's the limit really you know like you can just try and try and um as long as you are happy Mm -hmm. like I I made like a really good amount of money doing what I was doing before but literally to me like no amount of money is worth how like sad I was yeah you know well and I think too it's like the the reason why I I push so many people to quit their jobs um is because like 
I, I feel like it's only that scary once. And so so for me, like I got into social media because I got fired. So I didn't have a choice. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like I had that that decision. It was like that decision was made for me. But I remember before I got fired being like so scared, like, well, I can't just fucking quit my job. Mm-hmm. Like I can't w- and do what? Like and pay my bills. How? Like get get around how? Like like I, you know, I had all of those questions kind of thing. And I knew that I wanted so much more for myself, but I was like, I have no idea how I'm going to get from point A to point B, and I don't know where, where to even start. And then, like, having that decision made for me, um, it, it was only that scary once. Mm-hmm. And then you get into this habit of putting yourself first mm-hmm. and trying new things and not being afraid. And and I, I just think that, like, that's such an empowering position to be in. And so that's why like I like to like push people in that direction because like it it is the thing is like you can always go back to what you did before not always obviously there's like always some kind of there may be a a point where you can't but like um you know for the most part it's like you you can always kind of go backwards but you when you do experience like truly moving forward for the first time it's like you're never as scared to be like, no, OK, I'm done with this now. Like I tried it, didn't like it, whatever. I'm like on to the next thing mm-hmm. and like just keep evolving and, and changing and stuff like that. And that's why, like, I think it's so cool to watch you have picked up so many different things because you are exploring all of those things that you were passionate about from a really long time ago. You became passionate about more recently, like, you know, like all of these different things. And it's just I, I feel like you're so much more in tune with yourself and like what you're enjoying and what you're not and then just kind of you know adapting how you need to adapt to just like live a good good life yeah and I think what's really cool I kind of like silver lining sort of thing you know like this pandemic has been really really you know tragic Mm -hmm. and really hard on mental health and um all of these things that we know to be true but something that has been cool for me to see is um people being really creative as well yeah um with how they can now you know supplement their income because of course so many people have lost their jobs and are struggling um but i do see people like taking skills that they didn't think were monetizable you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i don't know if that's a word but um and it is fucking now (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then offering it to the public for a price and then the public taking it and them running with it and stuff like that i just think that that is so cool and um you know, I, I do feel like I've gotten more creative. Like I have now like my hand in so many little different pots. It's like, okay, so I can, I can be, um, successful in this way here. And then I can, okay, I can like pull some money in this way and I can do this. And so it's like, yeah, like my brain's a little frazzled sometimes because I'm like, okay, (laughs) but I'm like, okay, I have money coming from here and then over. And you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like before I more so it was like, okay, I'm giving my time so that I can get a paycheck from this one place yeah but now it's like okay how can I put more energy and like more creativity into this so that I can now do this and then it's like okay I I edit your videos okay so that I know is like okay I have I I have availability there and just all of these little different things that like it would have never been an option for me Mm. um if I hadn't quit my job yeah it's it is I agree that it's cool to see like how many people were started pursuing like creative endeavors and stuff like that during the pandemic just because they, well, for one, a lot of people just suddenly had the time to. Yeah. Um, when they didn't before, and then obviously the downside for a lot of people as well was that they were losing jobs and stuff. But it's, yeah. I mean, that's that human resilience, man. Yeah. People just like making it happen and figuring it out, and I think it's been a very transformative time for a lot of people. Yeah. Um. Uh oh right, Rob Eddie Christie. Oh, she was on so early too. God, we haven't seen her in forever. I know it's so odd that she was at the house. She was yeah, and now that's like never <laughs> hasn't been a thing for another year. Um, but we talked about chronic illness with um Christie. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that episode was brutal to edit because like we we talked for like three hours. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't edit that episode. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that one was it was like it's not that it was brutal to edit. Like the conversation was so interesting, but Didn't I, we break for dinner? Yes, we broke for coffee. <laughs> and we came back. Oh, and I had boy. to cut it down into how long was that episode? I had to cut it it still ended up being an hour and 45 minutes long. Which is crazy. There was just so much said in that episode. Like mm-hmm. we just talked and talked and talked, but honestly like 
Christy obviously is just such a like phenomenal human as well. Mm-hmm. So um and also has been through like so much. Um so there was just a lot to say. Yeah. Um but yeah. That's something I've learned so much about you is like I I I knew that you had like chronic illness, but I didn't really like know much about it. Mm. Um, and that's something that like over the time that we've lived together, I'm like, damn, <laughs> you got some fucking shit going on <laughs> like, to an extent that I didn't really realize. Yeah. Well, it doesn't help that like I make you come to all my doctor's appointments. <laughs> now, now I'm very in the know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but thankfully my, other than the IUD now hurting my back, um, one of them has been resolved. That uh, lipoma that was in my back, I did end up getting it removed. Which and is crazy. it was, in fact, what was causing my pain, even though they told me so many times it's not what was causing my pain. And that's why you advocate. And that's why you abdicate. It was uh, wrapped around a muscle. Yeah. Causing me severe pain Oof. for 10 years. And she wasn't put under when that was removed from her back. I want that to be fucking noted because that's just absolutely outrageous. Well, the thing with lipomas is they usually, number one, it looked a lot smaller on the MRI that I had because it was like wrapped around tissue. I don't know what happened, but anyway, it looked a lot smaller than it was. Um, but usually lipomas are like more on just under the surface and you can kind of just like plop them out. Um, I think had they known what the situation (laughs) was, they would have put me under. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could feel the, I don't know if I should say uh, trigger warning, I guess blood. Um, (laughs) I could feel the blood gushing down (laughs) my side. It was, uh, oh, it was just horrific. And I was in there. They said it was going to take, what, like five, 15 minutes? Yeah, I think so. And it took like an hour yeah. to cut that bad boy out of me. <sighs> yeah, it was pretty crazy. Anyway, I freaking like night I, re- I remember what you were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing your black Adidas like big hoodie. Yeah, and I regretted it because I was fucking sweating <laughs> buckets. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, I'm glad that that's resolved. And actually, I, I don't know if Christy talked about her infertility on there. I feel like she did because she talked about I'm sure. PCOS, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Christy, she has, a baby. she has a baby now. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh my goodness. Oh, Christy, <laughs> back then she wouldn't even have known that it was I like an know, option. I know. She was going to be a mama. <laughs> Christy. <laughs> and now she's like such a mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She Aww. really, oh, it's awesome. Um, episode 11 was how do eating distor- disorders start? And we um, had on our perfect wonderful beautiful angel therapist annie yeah for that um she used to work in the eating disorder clinic um at one of the hospitals downtown yeah and um so she came out and talked to us about that which i I feel like the this first season um the, the thing that i'm just reflecting back on now was like that first season we dealt with a lot of really really like heavy topics Mm -hmm. and i think that that was something that we decided kind of moving forward and as you know we got into later seasons and stuff is that like we wanted to have some lighter episodes in there too because I think as much as like it's really nice to touch on topics that are more taboo and that was kind of the whole point of approachable in the beginning um it was taking these like hard to talk about topics and making them a little bit lighter but you know you also just takes an emotional toll on you as a person Mm -hmm. well and I think that as a listener too it's Mm -hmm. it's sometimes nice to just like have a break almost (laughs) like and have it just be content that's for like more of an escape purpose kind of thing Mm -hmm. and and that was how we felt too with recording it yeah so Mm -hmm. that was a definitely a change but um and then we had our this is the end which we just answered questions in and then dealing with addiction we, we we kept it light after this <laughs> it's like dealing with addiction navigating laws <laughs> yeah um but uh dealing with addiction we had matt come on my husband and uh we talked about his experience going through rehab um well going through addiction going through rehab going through recovery kind of thing um and he <laughs> we had to re- we had to record that episode a second time why i think the footage um got deleted of Ugh, of one of us either you or me oh yeah because we were trying the three camera angles which was pure fucking misery because epi- or season two was when we started recording the podcast mm-hmm. filming it yeah yeah and one of the the yeah one of the cameras wasn't working 
yeah, so we re-recorded that one because um, we were just getting used to filming and stuff like that at the time. But um, well, um, I also think that the reason that we were even so lighthearted in that one as well is because we had just re- filmed it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like we had some feedback on that where people weren't like super happy yeah. that we were like joking or whatever. Which I mean, also, you know, like that's kind of one of the things too, where it's like, this is like our story and this is like our experience. And, and someone actually commented saying, um, I can't, I can't remember if they included you into this or if they were just mad at me, but they were like, I, I, yeah, I think they did include both of us in being like, I hate how like, um, Sam and Alyssa are like making jokes about this and like whatever kind of thing. And, um, Matt's like talking about this really like intense subject and Matt responded to the comment being like, it's fine. Like, and, and that's the thing is like, it's, it's, you know, everyone copes with things differently. And for some people talking about addiction is is something they'll never talk about for other people. It's really traumatic. Um, but you know, for us, like, it's just, it's, it is part of our life and it's a discussion that we have had so many times and we, you know, and, and it is kind of more lighthearted for us at this point because, you know, it just, just, yeah. Well, and I think that um, at the time as well, like people didn't really, um, well, number one, as if you haven't talked at length with your husband about (laughs) his experience in addiction um, and people didn't really know me still. And so they Mm -hmm. didn't really know like what I've like been through either or like why I had any um, understanding of like what Matt went through. But like Matt and I um, understand each other a lot more than like I think people think. Yeah, (laughs) for sure. Yeah. Um, But that was a... Matt really enjoyed recording that episode and a lot of you guys wrote in and stuff like that and Matt responded back to basically all those emails. That's so nice. Yeah. That's actually like, that's a lot of emotional labor that Matt took on um, yeah. for the podcast. So that's really nice. Um, episode 14 was how all of our breakups went down. This, oh my God, I already am like furious. <laughs> I... Oh my God, I'm so furious. Like I literally like immediately, it's like this like calm wash of rage um we we talked about obviously like all of our (laughs) breakups and stuff like that and um I talked pretty at length about the the one especially um but one of my ex-boyfriends actually reached out to me um he I think he actually reached out to me like when that episode happened but I had his number blocked so I didn't see it um and then I have like an old computer that I like never use anymore and I opened up iMessage on there and this message from him popped up and he was just basically like, um, I'm so confused listening to the podcast because, you know, I thought we were on good terms, which how, first of all, <laughs> um, he was like, I thought we were on good terms. And, like, this was just really confusing for me. And, you know, like you, you, you have every right to like talk about it if you want. But basically, like, it was just like such a contradictory message. It was such bullshit. Like, I can't even remember everything that was in it, but I just remember being like so enraged and so mad and it's just like it, it was such an <laughs> interesting thing because I found that that message like a year later I think it was even well yeah I guess maybe a year because that was like almost recent yeah like well I guess nine months <laughs> cause you're yeah. Pregnant, yeah. but you weren't pregnant at the time um but yeah it was just it, t- talking talking about that relationship because I don't talk about it as much anymore because I was like 19 at the time when it was happening um and I, and I don't talk about it as much anymore, but when I do talk about it, I'm like, I can't even believe like how bad that was and how horrible it was and how that made me feel. Um, and I think I mentioned that in the episode because I had talked about going back through our Facebook messages and reflecting and being like, oh, holy fuck. Like I thought I was making it out to seem like it was worse than it was, but it was actually even worse than I was making it out, making it out to seem. Um, and it was just interesting when he messaged me about that podcast, it just took me like right back in there like that feeling it's just ugh, man so now that's all I think about when I see that episode I just remember that he called me ratchet (laughs) and I was like you've met me once yeah (laughs) fuck you bro and I'm still here I'm looking directly at you (laughs) where are you at baby (laughs) yeah one of one of the lines in like the message he sent me was that like you know I I often like regret like how I treated you but like I don't think that either of us would change like that what we have now and the people that we love now for whatever. And I'm like, God, like you're still talking as if like you have like some kind of control over me or that like this was your decision that you made for the both of us. Like mm. it's just, oh my God, the whole fucking, it was the just 
one of the worst fucking things I ever had to read in my life. Yeah. And he had a fucking earful that week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, I actually realized after we recorded that episode that I left a boyfriend out. Oh, I really? had another one, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I forgot the That's one. That's got to hurt a little. <laughs> He's listening to it back waiting and waiting. He's like, wait a second. <laughs> uh, especially because I talked about the one where like we really like weren't together together. Um, we like that was the one that I watched uh, Breaking Bad with and I was like it got pretty serious we watched Breaking Bad <laughs> um, but that guy and I like he's he's awesome but anyway the one that I forgot about was the one that uh, left me in the hospital when I had a broken foot Motherfucker. that guy yeah um, and I just wanted to quickly give him his time in the sun yeah. so um, yeah you so deserve it <laughs> yeah you're the best <laughs> um, yeah I'll just tell our breakup really quick um, we went on a hike together and I broke my foot and we were hiking in a way that like you you have to hike down and then you hike back up like you start at the top and then so anyway i broke it on the way down so i had to hike back up through the forest uh with a broken foot and he was hungry so he refused to take me because i couldn't drive um he refused to take me to the hospital before we had dinner so he basically (sighs) carried me into a restaurant so he wanted ribs specifically It's just like the fucking audacity. <laughs> like it's it's like astounding like what takes place in like the male brain. Brain. Yeah, like fuck. So we had to go to this restaurant that had ribs specifically before we went to the hospital. Uh it was a Friday and I had a martini because I was in like I, my foot was broken. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Cannot stress enough. Broken fucking foot. <laughs> so, yeah, I um I had a martini. Then we went to the hospital. But by this time, it's nighttime, Friday night, okay? Um, Every child that had their first drink came in 10 minutes before me. So the nurse actually said, had you been here 10 minutes ago, we could have gotten you in right away. But now it's nighttime on a Friday night um, and you're going to be here for hours. And my boyfriend at the time, he had a child and he was like, I you know, I can't stay. Um, the child was at his mom's. I'm pretty sure also like this is kind of a thing where I'm like, okay, like maybe you can be tired in the morning. You know what I mean? Um, so not only did he leave me in the hospital, he asked me if he could take my car home to his house so that he could get home. Um, and I said, I just don't want to like pay for a cab. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, how am I to get home from the hospital that you're abandoning me at? And he said, take a cab. So anyway, ended up, uh, he did not take my car. How was I supposed to get home? Cause, um, it was actually my left foot that was broken. So I could drive. But at the time that I broke my foot, I was in so much pain. Yeah. Didn't want to drive. Um, so yeah, I wasn't allowed to take any painkillers at the hospital cause I had to drive home in the morning. I ended up leaving the hospital at 6am. I think I got there at like 10. Um, and we broke up the next day. And for the best. Yeah. So Good riddance. Yeah. You know what? And uh, he also didn't want to date because I was moving to Toronto. And then, um, but I was only going for like a couple months. And he was like, I don't want to do long distance. And then he ended up dating someone who was going to Toronto. Perfect. Yeah. So just, I mean, I'm not like bitter because like I'm also happy, like dodged a fucking bullet. Yeah. Um, but fuck you. <laughs> yeah. And, and now you get your shout out. Yeah. Sorry I missed you. There you go. I can understand why you fucking left him out. Yeah. Um, Navigating Loss was the next one we did. Um, we talked about your papa. Yeah. Uh, mostly. Yeah. Um, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. I think a lot of people skipped that episode because it was really hard to hear and that's totally mm-hmm. fine. But for the people that did watch it I think that was a really meaningful one yeah you know what a lot of people did and still reach out to me about them dealing with loss and stuff like that so yeah which I think that that's kind of like what's cool about this is like it's it's kind of like this archive that I think is nice to go back through and like find like a topic that you want to just like hear people speak on like and I think that that's I don't know I feel like we created a good little thing here yeah um and then we did we did answering the internet's burning questions which was like a lighthearted one and then it was your getting sober episode finally getting sober question mark Mm -hmm. i was only two months sober in that episode yeah and i think you were struggling a little bit more at that time yeah i definitely never said like oh i'm gonna be sober for a long time or forever yeah i mean people always ask me i still say to this day like i never say i'm never gonna have another drink i don't think that that's beneficial for me and my recovery or whatever like i i can't 
this is what I say. I can't imagine having a drink. Yeah. Like even when people are drinking around me or whatever, like I actually cannot fathom. I still have the exact same two beers that were in my fridge when I got sober. You know, it's not, um, it's not even like a thing for me anymore um, at all. So I can't imagine a time that I would feel like I want because there have been times even recently, like within the last couple months where I'm like, ah, oh, like it would be kind of nice to have like a drink on a patio sort of thing. Um, but never enough to throw away what I've gained. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I really can't imagine a time where I would actually like follow through on those actions. Well, and I think too, like it's something that, you know, it's understandably like you're really proud of, Mm -hmm. you know, like I I think that like as much as of course it was obviously like difficult for you in the beginning, it's just sense such a sense of like pride and accomplishment and you know, it's just been like a good thing for you. So yeah, I bring up being sober like vegans bring up being vegan for sure. <laughs> for sure. Any option there is. Any time I get where people are like, did you have a drink? I'm <laughs> sober. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's the way that I am. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, there was somebody the other day who said, did you have a beverageino last night? Instead of saying no, I said, I'm sober. I don't drink ever. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, yeah, that's fucking right. But <laughs> yeah, I was also in that appointment. Yeah, you were. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, parasocial relationships. Actually, that was a really, really popular episode too. Yeah. Which I think as well, we were like, eh, are people going to be like interested in that one? But that was something that, yeah, we, we talked about parasocial relationships, which is basically kind of like the one-sided relationship we experience through following people on social media. Um, and it's, people reference that one to me all the time. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, I know I have a parasocial relationship with you. <laughs> but even in the episode, I was like, I do same, that. Yeah, yeah. Same, yeah. Yeah, like for me, I do feel like we're all friends because like, again, like my um, little community on Instagram and YouTube is like, it's so it's so much smaller, you know what I mean? Like I do recognize names and stuff like that all the time. Yeah. And like, there's quite a few people who I like actually know quite a bit about their lives. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, eh. But it, it is such an interesting, uh, interesting topic. Yeah. Yeah. That was a super popular one. I'm parasocially in a relationship with Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson's breakup. Still. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that was a tough one to move past, man. Is. Not that, I mean, I think that like, you know, Ms. Grande is like possibly in a better place now. I don't know about Pete, but um, there's, something, there's something special and spicy about their relationship, you know? Yeah. I know this is an unpopular opinion, but... I feel that way about MGK and Megan Fox. Ugh. I know you don't feel the same. I know it. I just, I, I, across the board, I hate Machine Gun Kelly. Let's yeah. just preface it with that <laughs> for anyone that's confused. Yeah. He is the worst. But like, I just, I just think that they could be soulmates. I don't know. Guess we'll fucking find out. Uh, we did our experience with talk therapy, which that's a, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, we've, we've talked at length not just on that episode, but on multiple other episodes about going to therapy and stuff like that. And I still, I think we both stand by that that is like one of the best decisions you can make for yourself if you have the right person that you click with. Yeah. And if it's like available to you as well. I mean, it's such, it's so hard when um, you can't get it covered, uh, like subsidized and stuff like that. But um, when you, when you find the right one and you can put the funds towards it Mm -hmm. man it makes such a difference yeah you know just crazy like the the way that I am now versus two years ago is just like oh my god same yeah the growth over the past like few years has just been crazy it's it's so weird to like reflect back on like how I used to think about things and react to things and even communicate Mm. um and it's I mean it just makes all the difference oh my gosh I feel like I'm such a good communicator in relationships now yeah like like part like with my partner yeah like I feel very like level-headed I'm not saying things to be mean like I'm not Mm -hmm. reacting like I take a step back like yeah 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 Matt and I our communication has gotten so much better too over Mm -hmm. the past few years um one of the episodes that we did was what are you gonna stop doing in 2020 little did we know everything (laughs) 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 we were not yet aware (laughs) um I think that we actually recorded this like it was released January 22nd of 2020, but I think that we recorded it quite a bit before then. We recorded it on January 1st. Yeah, which... So young. So naive. So naive. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, And then we uh, t- 
talked about COVID mm. for the first time. Oh, no. Wait. Where is that? Oh, I don't know. Hold on a second. Did it get deleted? Where is that episode? There's no way we deleted it. We didn't delete it. I mean, did it get deleted? Oh, you think so? Do they do that? I don't know. What the fuck? Hmm? Huh? Yeah, that's not on here at all. Oh my god, we leave approachable with a conspiracy. <laughs> well, I, I've never deleted anything off of there. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Well, anyways, we did an episode called The Elephant in the Room, and we talked about um, COVID. And it was so early on. Like, I think there was 175,000 cases total Mm -hmm. in the world when we recorded that episode. Yeah, it was like very new. And I just had a fucking feeling, man. Like, in Canada, people weren't really talking about it that much. And people weren't worried about it at this time. And I was just like, God, I just feel like this is going to be a thing. Well, and it's crazy now, like... Oh, I really hope that we still have that episode somewhere. Yeah. Because it is so crazy, like, just w- what what I thought it was going to be in the beginning versus what it's turned into. Like, now it's so weird to even imagine having someone at your house. Yeah. Or being able to, like, hug friends and stuff. And, yeah. like, I watch, um, like, movies where people don't, don't have masks on. And I'm like, what are they doing at this concert? Like, it's <laughs> it's so weird, like, how much you just, like, adapt to, well, this is life now. Yeah. Um, And it was... I remember like in I think around March is when it started to be more of a like global thing like we were all like really paying attention and like oh fuck like this is a thing now Um, because in January and February and stuff like that I think it was more of a like eh, you know like a lot of people were kind of like yeah it's nothing to be like concerned about like it's Mm -hmm. it's happening but like and then March was when everyone was kind of like oh that's when we went into quarantine yeah um, and I remember at the time that Twitter, like, instead of having, like, highlights on Twitter, which just was, like, everything that is trending or whatever, um, it was only COVID news. And so, like, every single day I would log on to Twitter and I would see, like, what the new update was and stuff. And it just, God, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Well, and we're still, in Canada, we're still doing, like, extremely poorly. Yeah. Worse, our- worse than ever. Yeah. Which is like we thought. <laughs> Bitch, we you thought. thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Episode thirty-eight. We uh, chatted with a friend of ours from high. Well, a friend of yours, more so from high school. Yeah. An acquaintance of mine, Holly. Um, Holly about becoming a teen mom, and I feel like that episode was really well received too. Yeah, I think that a lot of people resonated with it, and um, Holly was just like a natural, honestly, like mm-hmm. just speaking about it, and it was so great to hear her speak. Um, as a mom, yeah. because, you know, I knew her growing up and stuff like that. And, um, obviously when we were, we were so young when she had her, um, her son. So, um, we obviously drifted and we had drifted throughout high school and stuff. So it was really, really cool to see her speak like that and talk yeah. about, like, I remember asking her, um, did it feel weird? Like going into, cause she had said, um, that it's, sometimes different like being a young mom like are you the nanny and I was like is it uncomfortable like going into parent teacher interviews because you know you're so young Mm -hmm. um and she said I mean I don't even really think about it now because I'm just I'm there for my kid and I was like yeah Mm -hmm. yeah you're a mom yeah (laughs) and I mean like we're we're getting older now you know like we're 27 um but for I'm 28 yeah yeah thank you though for trying to rope me into your youth we're one yeah same same um so I think that, like, obviously when she was 19, you know. It was so different. So different. But, um, yeah. And her, her saying that her son says, uh, you're like, you're, you're cool because, like, you're fast and stuff like that. I'm yeah. like, oh. Well, and even I remember when she was like, yeah, I was having a conversation with him the other day. And we were like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, you're having a conversation with a child that's yours. Like, that's, it, like, it's such a, it, it was interesting to me to listen to that because I wasn't close with Holly. I didn't know her very well, but, like, I knew of her because we're, like, our hometown is just, you know. Small. Yeah, it, <laughs> it feels very small. Um, and so it was so interesting to hear her, like, talk about it in person and, and like, being the age that we are now and kind of just comparing that to h- how I remember that 
being a thing at the time when we were teenagers. Yeah. It was just such an interesting, that was such an interesting conversation. Yeah. And I remember she said, uh, yeah, he's a human with thoughts and feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. He sure is. Yeah. He's the coolest man. <laughs> mash, mash. <laughs> yeah. I just want to quickly what skim over aliens in Massachusetts <laughs> because, because of Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you had to say it again the other day for some reason. What was that for? I can't remember. You can't remember <laughs> why, but gosh, that's just so funny. Um, but yeah, that one was just funny because of how I said Massachusetts. Matt taking over as co-host. The, the, basically, the past two years has been Matt trying to weasel his way onto the podcast somehow. <laughs> He's always like, why don't you have me back? Like Anytime I was like, what should we record? He'd be like, why don't you have me back? <laughs> Why don't you have me on? And I'm like, what are we going to talk about? And he's like, we can talk about anything. Because, like, he listens to podcasts that are just, like, he, he listens to more so, like, comedians that they just get on and bullshit kind of thing. And I'm like, that's not what approachable is. <laughs> you go in with a clear topic. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that was really nice of him, actually, because that was right after my um, lipoma removal. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I couldn't even, that's like, why. sit up. Yeah. Yeah. And there was one that he came on when you were sick. Oh, I had, because I got strep throat from... Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I got strep throat from the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, which was, like, terrifying because that was during COVID time, obviously. Um, but, yeah, it ended up being strep throat. Yeah, you were hurting. I was in a bad place, man. Ugh, man. <laughs> like, physically, I mean. Um, but Matt was, it was his delight. Um, are we what we thought we would... Are we where we thought we would be? We um, discussed where we thought we would end up in life, and... Um, what we're planning for the future. Why don't I remember that at all? I don't know, but I feel like so much has changed even since then. I was just saying, I wish we had done that like now Mm -hmm. because babies, I don't have one. (laughs) I don't have one. (laughs) Not to me. (laughs) Um, And I don't even know if I brought that up like in the, um, in the episode. I would have, Oh my God. So when we uploaded that, I would have been, wait, yeah, I would have been like days away from finding out I was pregnant. <gasps> you were already <laughs> pregnant. Yeah, I would have already, well, maybe not at the time we were recorded, but like, well, yeah, probably because we were recording pretty freaking loosey-goosey. loosey-goosey. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like we weren't doing a lot of re-record or pre-recording. No. Um. So yeah, I would have just, I would have found out. 11 days later oh mm-hmm so pff, things have fucking changed no kidding yeah i don't even remember what i said in that episode to be honest so. yeah i don't know either i'll have to go back and listen to that one we've had the pleasure of being joined by two different doctors um dr brado and dr badali um it's so fun to like fun we were always talking about really heavy topics but like but like it's so nice to be able to like talk to um professionals about certain things because I think that there were certain topics that people wanted us to cover but we weren't really qualified yeah like we didn't feel like super well versed in it and stuff like that and so we're definitely I mean both those women um have done two episodes on the podcast now and they were both just so lovely and so great to work with yeah and and both doing like such important work like dr mm-hmm. brado is just unreal um doing so much work for um like women's health and like debunking desire and um stuff like that and she's just she really makes the conversation around sex and desire and all of the things that go into it just feel really comfortable like just like the least stigmatizing conversation i've ever experienced in my life yeah like it just felt like I could talk about fucking anything with this person. Yeah. <laughs> and she would not like bat an eye. Yeah. No, she's so fantastic. Um, we're really lucky that she agreed to come back on the podcast a mm-hmm. second time. She's also like a wildly busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Dr. Badali too, like coming on to talk about anxiety um, first in the form of phobias and then uh, second to talk about um, postpartum. postpartum and stuff like that with Sam. And she had actually reached out to us, which is just, it's so cool that like, People that I feel like are just like so important. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. they care sort of thing. Um, she had reached out about Sam, one of Sam's tweets uh, saying that she was nervous. You were scared. 
Yeah, I was asking like about people's experience giving birth if if they had been scared before. Like, what was it like when you were actually yeah going through labor and stuff? Yeah, and you can just tell like how passionate Dr. Badali is about like protecting our mamas and stuff like that. So that was such a good episode too. Yeah. Um. Uh, we had a uh, an approachable listener on Leanne. (gasps) Yeah, she talked to us about her neurofibro neurofibromatosis. Yeah. Um, and kind of just like all the things that she went through, um, surrounding her chronic illness, like with, um, addiction and, um, you know, what it was like on her family and her friends or what it is like with her family and friends and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it was just, it was such a pleasure to talk to her first of all. And she had reached out to us as well to talk about that. Um, but also like it was so eye opening, and she was just so open and Mm -hmm. it was so great. Yeah, I believe that she um, is or was doing uh, question and answers on her like Instagram, her Instagram lives, yeah. on her Instagram as well. Um, I'll reach out to her and ask if she if um, we can like link her. Yeah. Instagram because um, she was doing them. Yeah, she was just so uh, vulnerable and open in that episode as well. And I know that she cares so much to talk about it because of her experience. Right. Yeah. And like especially with the. um experience of pain and not either not being taken seriously in that or just being prescribed you know opiates especially Mm -hmm. um with really no like regard for the addictive addictive like nature of opiates and that's just so scary so um i think that it was a really important episode and i think a lot of people really like uh learned a lot from that episode as well yeah i agree and a lot of the stigma as well because i think oftentimes you can think of an addict in a certain way we've talked about that so many times as well but I I just I don't feel like addiction discriminates (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. what I mean it's like if it comes into your life um via a doctor or whatever it's like it's chemical well and I think that that's kind of you know like like you can you can become an addict through so many different avenues you know what I mean like it's not just like because you're like a crazy party animal or something like that and I think that it was a really important kind of perspective to bring up because like this was something that she was doing to try and help her to even just get to baseline yeah to like to like be able to live her life yeah yeah Mm -hmm. that was it was awesome um our 2020 didn't go quite as planned episode 55 (laughs) uh we reflected back on i think the first um episode that we did of the the season which was us um talking about what our goals were going to be for 2020 and then obviously things drastically changed yeah um but again just kind of reflecting back on all that yeah and then episode 56 we announced that i was pregnant yes um jiving in there right now yeah um yeah i was really unsure about whether or not i was going to share my pregnancy um but here we are yeah i remember you going back and forth about it not knowing and and Mm -hmm. whatever and um obviously like supporting you in either decision but I am kind of glad that you did choose to share because it's so fun to get to talk to people about it Mm -hmm. um obviously I only talk to the length of the of what you share yeah yeah yeah. um but it's just fun and like I get to be excited about being an aunt like outwardly and stuff like that Mm -hmm. I don't that's the thing like I don't feel like I'm not an aunt (laughs) <laughs> you know like I forget that we're not sisters <laughs> like oh yeah we're just best friends like no man that's like that's my it goes deeper than that yeah that's my kid in there <laughs> yeah um but in episode 55 I think we we spoke to the fact that we wouldn't be recording anymore that we wouldn't be posting the video. the video anymore um and we were like we're just busy but um we had said that because originally I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to share that I was pregnant and we so we weren't sure if we could keep recording. I mean, it was true <laughs> that we were extremely busy. That yeah. wasn't a lie. Yeah. Um, we just omitted that like the main reason is because Sam's belly would be growing. Present. Yeah. And <laughs> difficult. I just like s- slowly like over time, like a blanket just gets like higher and higher until it's like under my chin <laughs> in every yeah. episode. Yeah. Um, oh, then I talked about being a brand owner yeah this was a big season for you i know oh my goodness yeah um auric launched yeah in january of 2021 uh wow it's been such a long year 
<laughs> um, but Auric finally launched in January 2021. Um, and so we talked about uh, the whole development and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then we had on your other friend, Kirsten. Yeah, to talk about fitness in the online space. Um, I was I was really pleasantly surprised because I said some things in there that I was a little bit concerned about, mm-hmm. um, especially just because with me, like going on more of a health journey, um, I had gotten some like negative comments yeah. ab- about my body, you know, being like that I'm trying to show off and um, that I shouldn't post in actually the same clothes that I had been posting in yeah. for years. You know what I mean? Because I had a different body um, and I hadn't really expected that. And so I kind of like s- said that on the podcast and I was really pleasantly surprised um, in the way that people received that. And that actually ended up leading me to feel comfortable to talk about my health journey online, yeah. um, which also uh, seemed to help a lot of people. And that's like one of your most viewed. Is it the most viewed? It is the most viewed. It's the most viewed video on your channel. Yeah. So that was really cool. And honestly, I just like believe in Kirsten so much. I think that she's um, she's been through so much, too. You know, like she has such a story and she's also a very like open and honest person. Mm-hmm. Um and I think that she's like really inspiring and empowering. She cracks me up, man. She's hilarious. Yeah, she's like she's very um, she's she's like a uh, what do you call it? Um, oh God, like a motivational speaker type vibe. She, she's just like an entity, like yeah. like you know, she's like such a like experience kind of thing. She's a moment. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, like high energy, like, yeah, yeah like rah-rah. Yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. I just love her, man. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, Matt came back. Um, and we talked about uh, um, his views on feminism and misogyny and stuff like that and just how his views around that has changed since we have been <laughs> together. Yeah. Um, so he got his, he got another moment of being co-host for just a second. <laughs> Oh, yeah. his last. Yeah. His last moment. Mm-hmm. Unless we bring him on again. Unless he know. weasels his way in. Because we are recording this not actually. The last episode. The last episode. We have a couple more episodes to record. Yeah. But we're taking this one on. Um, but yeah, I, I I remember that there was people that commented saying that they weren't going to watch that one. Because they were like, I don't want to like my opinion of Matt to change. Because they didn't know like what he was going to say. Oh. Um, but that was... I love having those conversations with Matt because it is so nice to like just hear him even reflect on like how much he's changed and and also like how like grateful he is for that as well. Um, Because, you know, like I think like especially in relationships, it's just difficult anyways. And like growing as like a person is just difficult anyways. But Matt and I have been through the fucking ringer with, with our relationship and stuff. And it's it's so nice to like hear him reflect back because we we have had like really hard times and we have had like so many difficult discussions and you know he's changed a lot and I've changed a lot and um it just that episode to me was like not fun necessarily to record um but I was glad that we did because it just you know it's always nice to kind of go back and just remember how much things have progressed for us yeah um women in business yeah we basically just like bitched about being women in business Mm -hmm. and our little experiences so true yeah i had since we released that episode i had somebody that i was working in business with um message me about my looks yeah unfortunately (laughs) just hard man like you can be as professional as you want and sometimes they just shoot their shot even when it's not appropriate. <laughs> well, and it's like <laughs> kind of the discussion we were having at the time is that it's like you feel so entitled to me that like you think that like because you're interested, you can just p- pull me into that conversation mm-hmm. at, like a- at, on a whim. Like what the fuck? Like we have no there's no I can attest to this. There was no grounds for this to happen whatsoever. There was no like like oh sorry I misconstrued like it was like the most business relationship ever not like flirtatious not like oh that could have I could see how that was interpreted no (laughs) like the driest emails (laughs) resulting in the thirstiest motherfucker (laughs) 
<laughs> it was fucking something else. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, it's just disappointing. You know what I mean? Like there, there are times where I think like it's brave to shoot your shot. You know, like if <laughs> that was been, not fucking one of them. No, that wasn't one of them. Um, but like I can I can understand how hard it is to shoot your shot sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Um, but no, that there no that was not the time nor the place nor ever. Yeah, quite frankly. Um, so yeah. But I mean, touching on being a woman in business, that's something as well that I feel like you are such a self starter. <laughs> You've like taken on so much like learning yourself i mean Alyssa, i've said it before already but um Alyssa basically like took the merch thing and mm. did it all on her own <laughs> um <laughs> like set it all up and did like all the like everything everything that needed to be done around it kind of thing because i was doing shit with work and fucking being pregnant um <laughs> and uh yeah you just have learned like so much and you like did it all on your own and you just look at you. Thank you. I'm learning. <laughs> the ultimate um, yeah. woman in business. Yeah, it's been cool. It's like um, when I take a step back and actually like when you tell me like, oh, it's cool that you took this course and then you like implemented it right away and stuff like that. It's like, oh, that is cool that like I can do that. And like I did learn how to edit the podcast when we were using like three cameras and you what know. haven't you fucking done? No, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> like you you've like you've honed so many new skills like you've yeah. learned so much you've grown so much you've like taken on so many things yeah it's been a really cool like experience living here and like um getting to be together all the time and like work together and experience life together <laughs> you know like it's just it's it's weird looking back like even listening to the way that I speak in the first episodes like I can tell I'm like so timid and like I know that you said like you didn't feel that way but like um I just feel like even in the tone of my voice like I I just know how like self-conscious I used to be and like unsure of myself mm -hmm. and what I was saying and like worried and um I just don't really feel that way anymore I still I more so feel like I'm careful because I want to be um uh received the way I'm trying to yeah you know what I mean come across um but I I just am I just feel so different like yeah. such growth yeah so little time yeah so little time so much to do you know what though in one of the first episodes i did um like people always say like Alyssa can make a song out of anything or like relate it back to a song i did it in one of the first episodes <laughs> so that's been like a podcast wide <laughs> yeah thing from like day one. Oh boy and now we're in the final season yeah and you're moving on to do your podcast to greener pastures yeah <laughs> which I'm so excited for. You know what? I'm I'm so excited too. And when we first discussed uh, ending approachable, you know, we were thinking like are we going to keep it like keep it up? Like what is going to happen to the podcast and um ultimately we decided that I would take it over and do like what I was passionate about and I was thinking I'm like I don't want to continue approachable without you it doesn't feel right to me you know I think that the reason that approachable worked was because of both of our perspectives and like the conversation between us two um and I was thinking about what I am like just so passionate about and like love mm -hmm. you know what I mean and like it's kind of like in a sick way because obviously these are like horrific things <laughs> yeah. um but I just I do I find it so fascinating and and like the psychology behind it and the you know what I mean like how police work has evolved and stuff like that and getting the stories out there so I am I'm, I'm excited to like dive into something new and um, I mean I've already recorded yeah by this point um, and I'm excited for you guys to see it yeah and to kind of continue on this journey with with me and mm. I hope that you do I hope that you enjoy it and that we stay like a family together and they will yeah. you will no. <laughs> 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 yeah so anyway i'm not taking a hiatus so there you go that wasn't meant to be like <laughs> yeah so i'm not fucking taking it. you'll notice a, quite a few less hiatuses now <laughs> if we spend the last episode just airing out grievances no 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 i didn't mean it like that i just mean um approached will be out next wednesday the first episode yeah. of approached will be out next wednesday so you guys don't have to even we're really just don't you don't even have to worry about the body cooling oh yeah 
No, I'm not saying it. I'm saying it's good. Like, it's like they don't have to even be like, oh, fucking approachable ending. Yeah. I'll be here. Yeah. Yeah. She's coming back strong. And I don't know. We haven't talked about this, but maybe Sam would be a guest one day. Like, I could, yeah. you know. So you just don't, you just have to keep watching. <laughs> because who knows when I'll fucking pop. And I won't, like, we're not going to put it in the title either. I'll just or the pop thumbnail. in. Yeah. 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 So you have to listen to every episode. <laughs> and you have to use every promo code. <laughs> Uh, Um, thank you guys so much for an amazing two years yeah you know it's just been so fun and what a cool experience that you allowed us to have really um, Mm -hmm. together and thank you so much for listening it really was just i'm not letting i'm not like moving on just yet um it it like this was such a this is like a like page in our friendship (laughs) to me like this is like such a it's like so much more than a podcast. I'm not going to cry. Um, <laughs> but it's like, I, it really was like such a like learning experience, like not only about myself, but about you. And I feel like it brought us like so much closer together and we like learned so much together and it was just such a good, what a yeah, good run. I know. <laughs> and like, so, and also I think as well, like, you know, this like allowed us to have like this kind of separate career together, you know, which I think is so cool too, because when we first started again, like we had no idea how it was going to go or how long we were going to keep it up for or anything like that. Um, And it was just so much more than it was, it was a good thing. Yeah. I wonder if our friendship would have been as strong if we didn't start the podcast. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say I don't think so, but like, because I don't want to like just sum it up to that, but like, I feel like it definitely, it just, like, added to it so much more, and it made it, like, that much richer, and um, I was on a YouTube Live this morning, and people were asking, because we're moving, (laughs) and so (laughs) people were asking if Alyssa was coming, and I was like, oh, she's fucking coming, Um, but people were like, oh, like, you guys, like, it's so, like, nice watching your, like, relationship, and people have commented that on the podcast many times, saying, like, it's so nice, like, seeing your guys' friendship, and, like, it's such a special thing. You don't even understand. (laughs) Like, it's just, it's even better than you think. (laughs) I'm pregnant. I have an excuse. (laughs) Oh, it really, it really is. Like, somebody today said um, to me, you and Sam are soulmates, and I'm like, I know that it, like, sounds like I'm joking, but, like, we we are. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy! Yeah, she she <laughs> finally the waterworks. It, it, I cracked on the last episode. <laughs> she waited. Oh. Uh, Alyssa tearing up in every episode. You had to wait till the bitter end. Yeah, for me. And those are some like they're red. Oh, gosh, oh. I'm wearing my lashes. I'm sorry. I'll buy you new ones. <sighs> Thank you. You're welcome. I know that you made your ex boyfriend buy you lashes when he made you cry. <laughs> yeah, it's only fair. And I deserved it. <laughs> and I deserve it now. Um, but anyways, thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sam, for being the best co-host a girl could ask for. Thank you. Same to you. And I'm so excited to see you as not a co-host, but just a host. Yeah. And then I'll be the guest co-host sometimes. Yeah. Again. Maybe. You have to check in. One time. Yeah. I'm not going to promise anything. She's going to have a kid, for Christ's sake. Yeah. So true. So true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, guys. guys. For the last time. Yeah. I won't see you next week. I'll see you next <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my eyes are murky. <laughs> uh, uh, I sweated in this room for the last time. <laughs>